Hi, I'm Kim Fixie. I'm a lead sales engineer here at ACT. Well, last week we had our webinar on passive thermal solutions. So today I'm going to address some of the questions from that webinar. Great question. It'll vary based on the manufacturing process, but for ACT heat pipes, they are not the same. On one end, we do a spun end. On the other, is a pinched end. That pinched end is there so that we can draw a vacuum, which is critical in the function of heat pipes. Once we draw the vacuum, we pinch it off, and then we dip it in solder for a cold weld. Another great question. Heat pipes are required to operate in a vacuum. They operate in a vacuum so that way it operates along the saturation curve of its working fluid. And as soon as there's a temperature differential, the working fluid will vaporize. So it is extremely important to draw the vacuum. There's no pressurization internally, so that way as the working fluid vaporizes, the vapor creates a pressure difference. And that vapor pressure then moves to the area of lower pressure. That's what's going to actually drive the heat transfer and allow the heat pipe to move the heat from one spot to another. When we design a PCM heat sink, we're designing it for the entire enclosure. We don't want your components to actually come in contact with the PCM itself, it's coming in contact with the heat sink. So as you're going through these different freeze thaw cycles of the PCM, any expansion would not cause the heat sink itself to move. Therefore, you would not experience the same stress or strain you see with thermal expansion. In fact, when we manufacture the PCM heat sink, we manufacture it with the PCM fully melted. This way, the PCM goes in smooth, fills in all of the different crevices that are designed in this heat sink itself, and we fill it up to the capacity. So that way, the full thermal expansion of the PCM is already known in the heat sink. When it solidifies, it shrinks in volume and expands whenever it's melted. So for some customers, we can do direct bond. We've had customers who want to direct bond diodes to the actual heat sink itself. For that, we'll use some sort of CTE match bonding material. Other customers will use a pretty typical solder or thermal epoxy. Still others will want to do some sort of floating heat sink that has more of a friction interference in order to butt up to their components. Other customers will use a thermal gap pad and they'll directly screw their heat generating components into the heat sink itself and then put a thermal gap pad in between. Since everything we do is custom, we want to make sure the heat pipe is designed particularly for your application. Every heat pipe will test differently based on what you need. So a heat pipe that's designed to handle 40 watts with a delta of 15 degrees C might not test as well for a different situation. So, short answer is no. Final answer is we can design something that'll meet your needs. <laughs>